Harry Potter is a huge franchise with so many books and movies, and there are still more coming out every few years. I thought that it would be fun to rank every Harry Potter book and movie from worst to best. This is kind of more for myself than anyone because I've never really done this or thought about it before, but I'm sure you guys will enjoy it because I've had a few requests to do this. I'm sure that many of you will disagree with my list, and that's fine, everybody has their own opinion, but let's try to keep the comments positive. So let's get started. First, we have The Cursed Child. I've never seen the play, but I've read the book twice and absolutely hate the story. It's so unfaithful to the source material, the biggest thing probably being Voldemort having sex with Bellatrix. <sighs> I'm actually working on a video about this, so I won't go into too much detail here, but all in all, it's awful. And it's not just the worst, but it's 100 miles below the next entry on this list. Next is Fantastic Beasts. As I said in my review for this film, I did enjoy it, but it just didn't capture the same magic that the other books and movies had. It was an introduction to a whole film series, so that might have something to do with it. It was so focused on this new time period that it didn't really have time to stand on its own. I am very excited to see its sequel, Crimes of Grindelwald. I really like the direction that they're going from what we've seen in the trailer so far. And now that the time period is set up, maybe it will be on par with the other books and movies. Jeez. Next is the Goblet of Fire movie. Now I have to say, at this point on the list, I love every one of these books and movies with a passion. But I'm going to try to explain why the ones that are lower on the list are where they are, which comes with some criticism. This one is my least favorite of the original series of films. They cut a lot out from the book that I really enjoyed, like Barty Crouch Jr.'s development, the Quidditch World Cup, Winky, Dobby, and so much more. Director Mike Newell took over, and he had never actually read any of the books before he took the job, which is frightening. This was his first and last film in the series, which is fitting. Next, we have the Half-Blood Prince movie. This one disappointed me because they cut so much out about Voldemort and his past, which is probably my favorite part of the entire series. When you're adapting a book to a movie, and the book is this long, you have to choose certain areas of the story to focus on, and I think that they chose the wrong areas here. They focused on all of the teen drama and relationships, which wasn't even that big in the actual book. Oh, to be young and to feel love's keen sting. In the novel, it simply complemented the story, but here, it dominated the story. And the worst part of that is that they ruined my favorite couple in the series, Harry and Ginny. I've talked about this in multiple videos, but I just can't skip over it. They make them so awkward and so uncomfortable with each other. Shoelace. It's unfortunate because this is the exact opposite of how they were in the books. Choosing to focus on the couple aspect was the wrong choice in my opinion. There were so many other things to focus on like Voldemort's past, the Half-Blood Prince, and Malfoy. They barely scratched the surface with all of these things in the film, and at least two of them should have been the main focus of the movie, rather than the relationship aspects. Next is the Chamber of Secrets movie. Not too much to say about this one, which is exactly why it got this spot. It's forgettable. When you think of the Harry Potter series, the Chamber of Secrets movie doesn't scream out to you the way that the other films and books do. Next is the Order of the Phoenix book. This is my least favorite book in the series, and it just happens to be the longest. I remember my first time reading this book. It took so much longer for me to read it than the others, and not just because it was the longest, but because it just didn't bring me into the story as much as the others did. I felt I was able to put it down and not be thinking about what's going to happen next constantly. I feel like it was a bit boring at parts, and Rowling even said that she wished that she had cut it down, which I definitely agree with. Next, we have Deathly Hallows Part 1, the film. When writing a story or a book, there is a writing formula that you follow to tell the story, which Rowling did for the entire Deathly Hallows book, and splitting that formula up into two parts never goes well. Here it made the first part seem very slow and pretty boring. Not much happens, they're camping and talking. And because the formula of Deathly Hallows doesn't get to finish itself in this film, all of that nothingness doesn't turn into anything or pay off at all. This ends up making the movie very unsatisfying. However, the ministry scene was top notch. Next is the Chamber of Secrets book. After the first book set everything up in this amazing world, we could just jump right into the story. The premise is very intriguing, discussing the origins of Hogwarts and the four founders, as well as introducing us to the young Voldemort, or Tom Riddle. It wasn't the most exciting book, but it was a very enjoyable read. Next is the Prisoner of Azkaban movie. This movie used to be much lower on my list, but I had made that judgment as a kid when I saw it for the first time. 
But now that I'm older and have almost finished my college degree majoring in film, I see how incredibly well shot and created this film was. Alfonso Caron is an outstanding director and a true artist. That being said, I do still have some problems with the film, like Dumbledore being out of character and hitting Ron's broken leg. <laughs> Also, the way that they did the time turner scene, I feel was even better than how they did it in the books, which is a rare sighting. If only they included the Marauder's backstory. Up next is the Philosopher's Stone book, or the Sorcerer's Stone if you're from America. This is the thing that started it all. It's what introduced us to this amazing and incredible world. The book perfectly introduced us to all of the characters and the incredible places. It was a great introduction. It's not the best in the series, but just the fact that it was the first one makes it take this spot on the list. Next is the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone movie. Again, it's not the best story-wise, but it's what introduced us to the series. I put the film above the book simply because it was the first visual representation we got of the series, and the visuals are beyond amazing. They actually made Rowling cry the first time that she saw them. We got to see Hogwarts, Diagon Alley, Gringotts, and so much more just come to life. Just the visuals alone spawned two entire parks dedicated to the magnificent work done on the set designs by the incredible Stork Craig, who was behind everything. Next is the Prisoner of Azkaban book. This book will always have a place in my heart because it explored the Marauders so deeply. I absolutely love their origin story. They're one of my favorite parts of the series. I remember reading this book for the first time and being thrown for a loop with so many plot twists. First, we find out that this murderer is after Harry and that he gave up his parents to Voldemort. That in itself is a huge plot twist. I did not expect anything else. Then we find out that he's Harry's godfather and that Harry actually has a picture of him from his parents' wedding. And then, we find out that he's actually innocent, and find out that Scabbers, a pet that we've known for three whole books, is actually a man who had framed Sirius and had given up Harry's parents. The story was so beautifully written, and is still one of my favorites. Next is the Goblet of Fire book. This one expanded the universe so much, introducing us to different wizarding schools, taking us to the Quidditch World Cup, introducing us to Death Eaters, and teaching us the three unforgivable curses. It also brought back Dobby, made Harry have his first crush, and of course, has Voldemort come back to life. So much happens in this book, and it's all so interesting. It pushes Harry farther than he's ever gone before, having him fight for his life against the man who killed his parents. I also love the Crouch family story and love how it ties into Neville's tragic past, both of which we learn in this book. All of this makes for such an incredible story and such a good read. Next is the Deathly Hallows Part 2 film. This is the finale of the 10-year film series. It was an outstanding wrap-up for the movie franchise. The way they put the fight sequences together was amazing. They used so many filming and editing techniques and mixed them all together to have a very visually pleasing battle. They absolutely nailed the prince's tail and Snape's backstory. The editing for that scene was perfect for what they were trying to convey. There were also so many payoffs, like seeing Neville become a true hero, or having David Thewlis and Gary Oldman return as Lupin and Sirius. And Remus, your son. Others will tell him what his mother and father died for. It's by far one of the darkest films in the series, and easily one of the best. Next is the Order of the Phoenix movie. This is my favorite movie of the series, which is crazy considering how low the book is on my list. This was David Yates' first film for the Potter universe, and he hasn't stopped since, not only finishing the last four movies in this series, but also coming on to direct both Fantastic Beasts films. He's a director that really understands the franchise and how the characters, the world, and the creatures all flow together. And that's clear in this first film that he did. This film changed a lot of things from the book, which might be one of the reasons why I like the movie more than the novel. The ending of the film is the best part. I think the Department of Mystery scene was handled way better in the film than in the book. And later in that scene when Voldemort takes over Harry's body, it means so much more here and gives me chills every time. You have a weak one, and you'll never know love. Friendship. Next, we have the Deathly Hallows book. There were so many incredible parts, like the Battle of Seven Potters, breaking into the Ministry, visiting Godric's Hollow, breaking into Gringotts, and the Battle of Hogwarts. Every book before this took place mostly at Hogwarts, but this book had us travel the world with our favorite trio. It wasn't easy. They faced more hardships than ever before, not just with Death Eaters or Snatchers or Voldemort, but with each other. This book delves so deep into every aspect of the series and makes it all pay off as it ties up every loose end. 
And finally, The Half-Blood Prince book. This is and will always be my favorite book in the series. I think a big part of that is because it focuses so much on Voldemort, who's my favorite character. It gives us so much more detail on his mysterious and interesting past, which I just find so intriguing. I also love the way that they focus on Draco becoming a Death Eater and his struggle to complete his mission. And on top of that, Harry's obsession with finding out what Draco was doing. I remember reading this for the first time and reading that Snape kills Dumbledore. My heart sank. I was so shocked and so mad. I literally read this book in one night, which I've never done before. I could not put it down. It will always be my favorite book. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help grow the channel. You can follow me on social media, links are in the description, and look out for more great videos on the way.